Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Open Heavens devotion today. It is my prayer that the Almighty God will reach out to every one of us today in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate all my returning subscribers. I am proud of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And those who have seen my channel for the first time today, I appreciate you too. I thank you. Do subscribe to my channel if you have not. And God will really bless you. If you like this video, when God breathes, part one, do give me a like and endeavor to share it with your friends and family who will benefit one thing or the other from it. God bless you. Today we are looking at the topic, when God breathes. Let us pray. Heavenly King of glory, we know that you don't need to breathe to survive like we humans. But whenever you breathe, it means that you have something special that you want to do. Father Lord, we invite you to today to breathe in every areas of our life that needs your breath so that they can be turned around for good in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible passage will be taken from the book of Psalms 1 to 8, 1 to 6. Time may not permit us to read it here. So later on, do read it on your own. But let's take the memory verse, Ezekiel 37, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. May the Lord bless the reading of his words, and bless all the hearers also, in the mighty name of Jesus. The thing that we need to learn, according to our daddy in the Lord, from today's topic, when God breathes, is that God does not breathe to survive like we human beings. God cannot die. God is eternal everlasting so when a person who cannot die definitely does not need to breathe in order to live in order to survive so whenever we say that god breathes it means that there is something rare and special that is about to happen like he did in Genesis 2, 7, which says, And the Lord God found man of the dust of the ground and breath into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The Almighty God does not need to breathe to remain alive. But he decided to breathe because he wanted to give life to a non-living thing. He breathed on an ordinary clay and it became a living soul. When he breathed on the dead, they will come to life. That is how powerful the breath of God is. Honestly, we human, one thing that, one thing or the other, as human beings, there are one thing or the other that will seem to be dead in our lives at one point or the other. So all we need is God to breathe on us and those things will bounce back to life. I pray for you this morning. There is anything that is dead in your life, no matter what that thing is, 
I pray that the breath of God will come upon those things and they will bounce back to life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. According to Romans 4, 19, which says, Not only was Sarah's womb dead, also the husband's body was dead too. But the one who can breathe life into dead brought it back to life. He does not only breathe on dead wombs. Our God can breathe on dead businesses, dead careers, marriages, ministries, and many more. And they will all come back to life. Be rest assured that the breath of God is ever powerful to do great and mighty things. So when we check our lives as, in, as individual, we are likely to notice an area of our life where there has been no progress for years. You will definitely need God to breathe on it and bring it back to life. In Genesis 49, 22, it says, Joseph is a fruitful bull. Even a fruitful bull by the well, whose branches run over the wall. Joseph prospered everywhere he goes. In the prison, he prospered. As a slave, he prospered. Ooh. And as a minister, the prime minister, he also prospered plenty. From the first verse of our Bible passage of today, that is Psalm 128 verse 1, it shows the secret of Joseph's fruitfulness. And what is that secret? He feared the Lord and walked in his ways. You have to stop committing sin. Every Christian, every believer must work. Work hard to stop committing sin in the ways. Work in the way of the Almighty God, in the way of the Lord. And then you would find out that what had seemed dead before in your life will begin to bear fruit. I pray that God Almighty will give you and give me also the grace to always fear him and to always do his will in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. When you fear God, it gives you abundant wisdom to apply in everything you do, your business, in your school, in your career, in whatever thing you may find within your hands. So let us pray fervently this year that the grace of God will abound for us to fear God, to fear God. And I want this opportunity to tell you, are you going into a relationship? Pray for a person that fears God to come into your life. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Our prayer point for today says, Father, please breathe on every dead thing in my life today in Jesus' name. What is that thing that may be dead in your life? Is it an organ of your body? Is it your business? Is it your progress? Is it whatever thing it is? Begin to ask God from today to breathe on it so that it will bounce back to life in the mighty name of Jesus. Our hymn is hymn 7. I am die, O Lord. I am die, O Lord. So let us sing it while we go our daily activities. As I close, I still want to appreciate 
my returning subscribers, those visiting my channel for the first time. If you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and you will surely be blessed. If you like this video, when God breathes, <coughs> excuse me, give it a like. You can feel free to share it with your family and friends so that they will grab one thing or the other from it. Remain blessed as you live a life bearing in mind that you must work hard to fear God. May God give you the grace to do that in Jesus' name. It's bye from me.